Well, praise the Lord. God bless everyone today. Uh, I give God all the glory and praise and, and I magnify his holy name. I'm going to tell you, God is so good. God is so good. Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Andrew Alexander, the pastor of Healing Word Church in San Antonio, Texas. And today, I want to talk to you about a subject that many Christians are confused about. Many Christians are confused about uh, this question that we're going to talk about today. But before we get into that question, let's go into prayer. So, Father, we thank you today for every soul that looks at this uh, video, Lord, for everyone, Lord, that is uh, has this question in their heart. And they just kind of wonder about what we're going to talk about today. Father, I ask that you would reveal it to them, that the Holy Spirit reveal it to them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, praise the Lord. I want to remind you to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell. So if you want to get more of these videos about deliverance, about healing, and about just salvation, uh, give me hit the hit the give me the thumbs up, hit the bell, and subscribe. Okay. All right, praise the Lord, and also tell somebody else about them because these videos are liberating. They will help you to get set free. So today I'm going to talk about, uh, I want to talk about, can a Christian, I, I want to say have a demon or be possessed. Maybe I should say be possessed. So the answer to that is no, they cannot be possessed. And, uh, but they can have demons in them. Okay. So there, there's a big difference. So I want you to understand the word, when the person say that person is possessed, that means that that demon has ownership okay if you are a child of god you profess jesus christ as your lord and savior the demon cannot own you you are owned by jesus right you're owned by him but the demon cannot own you now if you do not know jesus as your lord and savior then the demon can possess you he can have total control of you so there is a uh, is a big difference there okay don't you understand it? So Christians cannot be possessed, but Christians can be demonized. Okay. And I'm going to explain that to you. Christians can be demonized. Now, if somebody going around, most times they tend, you know, people will say, well, you can't have a demon because you're saved. And, you know, and when you got saved, you know, you got cleansed and all these other things. Right. Well, that's not true. Some demons will leave when you get saved but a lot of them will not leave because they're still there you know they're still inside of you uh just uh, what's an example say you are sick when you got saved after you saved you're still sick okay you see what i'm saying it, something's still there something haven't changed so what you must understand what changes inside of your body okay when you get saved you say lord jesus come into my heart I give my life unto you. Something does change, but it's not your flesh. It's not your emotions. It's none of that change, okay? Only thing changes is that spirit outside of you. The Bible says that you, he gives you his spirit. He gives you his Holy Spirit, his nature, right, on the inside of you. So that old man, the Bible says the old man is taken out and a new man is put in, which is the Holy Spirit. That part of you is what saved. Your flesh ain't saved, uh, your mind ain't saved, your body's not saved. Because you can still be saved and serving God and still cuss, right? That's your flesh. That's your mind. That's those things that are not saved. So I want you to understand. So when, it, when the devil comes to attack you, he attacks those parts that are not saved, okay? Not saved. Or are you not disciplined yet? You know, you got to grow in discipline with your body and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but you, but they're not saved. They're not saved. So when he brings sickness, he brings sickness to the body, right? To the body, not to the spirit. The spirit on the inside is not sick. It's God. Uh, so what? let me back up. So some people say, may say, well, how can the Holy Spirit and the saved, a Holy Spirit and a devil dwell together in the same body? Well, they absolutely can. I want you to understand that. They can. 
They can, they can, they can be in the same body. Okay, I understand that. The Holy Spirit is inside of you, right? He wants control of your mind and your flesh. And the devil, he wants control of your mind and your flesh. And hopefully, he can get you turn turn away from God and try to get your spirit also. So there is a battle that's going on. You know, just like King David. King David had the Holy Spirit. He sinned with Bathsheba. He killed Bathsheba's husband. And then in Psalms 51, David said, Lord, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. See, the Holy Spirit still dwelt in that body of King David. But he repented of his sins so that the rest of him can be cleansed. Okay? So it can dwell together. Okay? Because I'm going to tell you something. Ain't now, neither one of us, when we got saved, was perfect. The Holy Spirit came and dwelt and lived in us. And we were not perfect. Okay? Even with our sinful behaviors, even with this, the Holy Spirit is still in us. Okay? So I want you to understand that. Now. Now. Can a Christian have a demon? Yes. And many Christians do have demons. They have demon of lust. They have demon of lying. They have demon of stealing. They got uh, the demon of possession, the demon of death inside of them. And I mean, there's a myriad of demons. Uh, 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 they have marine spirits inside of them. They have all kinds of different demons inside of them. And see, see this is what we count as we go to the doctor about issues going on with us, hey, well, this issue, sometimes it's just issue. And I want you to understand that it's not like you go to the movie. You know, the movie, they show what this new movie, the new extras is out, and they look at all the end. Now, they may talk with those voices, but they, you know, doing all this other stuff. That's not how demons work. Demons are hidden. They, don't, they do not like to be revealed. They don't want you to know they're there inside of you. You know, when you're having all these problems and all these things, you know, and you say, man, I got all these problems. I can't get rid of it. The doctor can't seem to give, they give them all, give you all kind of medication. It's not helping all these things. Well, more than likely it's from a demon, but I'm not saying all sicknesses is from demons. I want you to understand that. Not all, but there is some out there. Or I'll say there's a lot of them out there that is from a demon. And, uh, and so it, it, it takes a, a deliverance minister trying to help you to discern what is going on there. But yes, you can have a demon. You can be sick and you go to the doctor and you done tried everything from the doctor and you can't get healed and it's more likely a demon. If you got pictures in your head, lustful pictures in your head, it's a demon. If you have ever went to a the occult, you have ever did any witchcraft, uh, Worshipping of other gods, tarot card reading, palm reading, uh, any of those really occult things, you have a demon inside of you. Because when you did, when you went, you set down your guard and there's a demon. There's demons of horoscope. There's a girl I was casting a, a demon out of and I said, and I was talking to the demon. I said, well, how did you get in there? And it said horoscope. He kept saying horoscope over and over and over. Horoscope. Because God told us not to look at the stars. He said, don't look at the stars for answers. Because a demon will come in. Anytime you disobey God, disobey the word of God, it opens the door for a demon to come in. It may He may not come the first time or the tenth time. But if you persist on continuing to, to do that, he will end up coming in. If you have a trauma, a near-death experience, more than likely, a demon will enter you. Okay? The demons are so evil that they will even come against a baby in the womb. So if you are pregnant and you have a trauma or something like that, the baby will, a demon will come. Okay? If the mom or dad will uh, reject that baby in the womb, that baby will have a spirit of rejection in the womb. So I want y'all to understand now. Y'all keep thinking these demons are out there. If I don't mess with demons, they won't mess with me. That's a lie. They're going to attack you any way they can. They are opportunists. They will take any opportunity to enter your body. 
And you may not even know that they're there for many, many years until you start having some issues. And you say, man, where did this come from? There's generational curses, okay? There's curses that you did not uh, initiate, per se. But there's generational curses that come from somebody way back down the line in your family. They did something occultic, and now that curse follows the bloodline. It goes down through the bloodline. So you'll see this in families with alcoholics for generations of alcoholics, right? Generations with people being uh, uh, promiscuous. If somebody got raped in the past, then you're just wondering why are my ch children promiscuous? Because it follows the bloodline. It wasn't anything of their fault. It was something that somebody else, it happened to them or whatever. And now these demons follow the bloodline. See, this is what I'm trying to understand. Yeah, there's a lot of folks in your church that are full of demons. A lot of folks that you sit next to. I got a lot of demons and a lot of issues that's going on. You know, uh, health problems. You know, I got cancer. Cancer come from demons. Sicknesses. God says in his word that he don't put any sicknesses on us. So sicknesses come from where? It doesn't come from God. It comes from a demon. That's what sickness is. A lot of times we speak up our own sickness. You know, it's like, like it's it that, that now they say it's flu season. You say, yeah, let me get prepared because I think I'm gonna get the flu. Well, you just spoke up your own your own thing. You just allowed the dead, uh, spirit of sickness to come on you because you're talking this craziness. God said, don't talk that stuff. You speak what God says in His Word. Okay, so a lot of things is self inflicted. You invite these demons in. I'm gonna tell you when we go through deliverance. And casting these demons out, them demons will say sometimes, no, they invited me. They invited me. They told they invited me in. Because it'd be something you said. You know, children going around saying, uh, you know, they unhappy or whatever. Adults too saying, I wish I can die. I just wish I can die. Well, they invited the spirit of death inside of them. So the spirit of death now is going to try to find ways to kill them. Okay? People who try to commit suicide have a spiritual spirit of death. All right. People who have an abortion has a spirit of death, a spirit of murder inside of them. You know, that's why they get abortions and stuff. They don't have no peace, no joy. They, they suffer because now and, they, and that spirit of death wants to do is get them to the point of dying. I mean, there's a myriad of things out there. I'm telling you, all people, the devil Y'all think he's unorganized. He is very organized and he is working to kind of kill you. That's why it is so important that you really know your word, that you study your Bible. Okay? That you study your Bible, that you know the Lord. Go to church. Be a part of a good uh, Bible teaching church. You know? I, I'm, I'm here right now in Lawton, Oklahoma, and this church is on almost every corner. Church should be full every Sunday, every Wednesday, every time the door is open. The church ought to be full of people learning how to fight or to resist the devil. But, you know, God is not going to kick him out for you. So I want to let you know, just simply go to your pastor and say, Pastor, pray for my sickness. Right. And he lay his hands on you and say, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you would heal this person. I pray, God, that you would restore this person. And I pray, God, that these, this, and this, and that. I want to let you know, and this is going to shock many of you, that that prayer will not be heard. God will not answer that prayer. Now, I want y'all, those who contact me, I'll tell you why. Contact me, contact me and remind me of this statement I said that God will not answer the pastor's prayer. Okay? And I will give you that answer to that. Okay? So you see my emails and stuff up there. If it's so shocking to you, contact me and I'll give you the answer to that. Okay? And the answer why people are not getting healed. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, anyway, so I want to, I hope y'all understand that you can. If you're a Christian, have demons because you have issues. All Christians have issues. You know, even when Jesus was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights, okay, 
And yet after his temptation, the Bible says that the devil went away for a season. He went away for a season, but he was coming back to try to tempt Jesus. Well, we're not greater than Jesus, okay? We're not greater than him. And the devil will leave, and sometimes he'll try to come back. He'll try to sometimes re-enter you when he's cast out. He'll sometimes try to find another way in. But we have to be vigilant. We have to know God's word. We have to live holy. Because God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes, that's what he said. And he expects you to be holy, okay? He expects you to pray without ceasing. Yes, he expects you to pray all the time without ceasing in your heart. In your heart. He expects those things. And these things will help keep those demons out. All right, praise the Lord. So, like I say, if you have uh, Alzheimer. If you have, uh, uh, what do I want to say, epilepsy, if you have uh, schizophrenia, if you have uh, all these mental uh, depression and fear and uh, uh, all these things. I'm trying to think of this one. Um, autism. And you have all these uh, different things. God, you can be delivered from them. You can be delivered from them. I know y'all probably thinking, man, this is not true. There is no way, no way. These things been around forever. There's no way that you can get delivered or set free from these things. There is no way. But the Bible says it's anything too hard for God. Okay? And if you read in the New Testament, Jesus, Jesus, they talk about Jesus, and he healed every disease and cast out every devil. Everyone was healed that came to him. Okay? See, it, it takes an act of faith on your part to come to the Lord. Find somebody. Come to the Lord. Learn uh, about this. All right? So, praise the Lord. Like I say, put up, uh, hit the bell, give me a thumbs up, sh uh, share this, and, and, and subscribe. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in uh, a deliverance class, learn about deliverance, let me know. And when we get enough people, I will do an announcement to say we're going to have this class now. So praise the Lord. Uh, but anyway, I love you very much. My name is Pastor Andrew Alexander, the pastor of Healing Word Church. You can find us on YouTube. You'll find us on Facebook. You can go to our website, healingwordchurch.org, and, uh, and connect with us, okay? Connect with us. Email us. I check all the emails. You can check, check, get with us through the website. Uh, well, however, just contact us if you want some help. All right. Well, God bless you. Until next time, I pray that this really answers some questions that you may have had in Jesus' name.